The first part of today's lesson is a watch and learn kind of review of what we did when we created this picture, because we created this picture last semester. So I want to start by kind of refreshing your mind on what we did and then point out some things in here that are going to lead us to today's teaching, which is what's going to allow you to be able to be successful on the IXL lesson. Okay, so we created this drawing with our compasses last semester. Let me uh, remind you of what we did. So when I first gave you this paper, there was one little line segment on here, AB. And what we did was we took our compasses and we set our tips at A and we went out here and we marked off B and then we made this first blue circle here. And then using the same compass length, we came over here and we marked off this blue circle as well. And what that did for us was where those blue circles intersected right here, when you draw a line through those, it creates what's called a perpendicular bisector. In other words, it takes line segment AB and it cuts it into two equal parts and it does it specifically at a 90 degree angle, perpendicular bisector. Now the next thing we did was we said, okay, well we've got this distance that stretches from D to E here. Let's see if we could create a perpendicular bisector running the other direction and slice that one in half. So what we did was we set our compass lengths here like this and we created this first purple circle and then we flipped the compass around. We set our tips here at D, came down here, and we created this second pur purple circle like that, okay? Now, where the two purple circles intersected, out here at F and out here at G, we drew a line through, and now what we did was we created a perpendicular, 90 degree angle, bisector to equal parts of line segment D, E, okay? So we did it twice. Now. I told you there's a lot of stuff buried in this picture, but we didn't quite have the language and the skills and the knowledge to yet really talk about it until now. And so now is an opportunity for us to kind of look at that. For example, let me show you something. Um, because we have this line segment right here having a one congruency mark, and this line segment right here having a two congruency mark, and the same thing here and here, we can actually prove that triangle ACD is congruent to triangle ACE by using a side angle side congruency proof. See that? A side angle side congruency proof. Now, by proving that those two little triangles are congruent to each other, what we then be able to do is say, by CPCTC, which we talked about yesterday, the corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, we can now go in and say all the other parts are congruent. All right. Now here's, here's how this kind of plays into what we talked about. When we did this last semester, we launched into an IXL lesson right after this. And that IXL lesson was called Perpendicular Bisector Theorem. And what the Perpendicular Bisector Theorem said is, if we have a line that is a perpendicular bisector, three things are true. Three things are true. And then in the, in the IXL lesson, it was like they always gave us two of the three and we had to figure out what the missing one was. Here are the three things that we know are true. If we have a perpendicular bisector, number one, it meets the original line segment at 90 degrees. That was one of the things that was true. The second thing was that it took the original line segment and it cut it into two exactly equal parts. That was the second thing that was true. But here was the weird one. We said that if we put a point anywhere on that perpendicular bisector, like here at A, that point would be equidistant from the endpoints of the original line segment. We even have it out here, like see here out point H, if we connected point H back to D and back to E here, those distances would be equidistant. Now, that's part of the theorem, but the reason that it works is because of triangle congruence. Look, again, ACD is congruent to ACE by the side angle side congruence theorem. That means that this line AD is just another part of the triangle, so it's on AE. It's a corresponding part of the two congruent triangles. That's why they always have to be the same, okay? Now, likewise, we also begin to know some things about the angles, okay? Um, take, for example, the fact that, again, we go back to these two congruent triangles right here. That means that this angle right here, DAC, and this angle right here, CAE, are also congruent because of CPCTC. But you saw this on some of the proofs yesterday when it said a line bisects an angle. Think about that for a second, okay? Angle DAE, the big angle here, the perpendicular bisector not only cut this line segment in half, it also cut this angle in half. This is exactly half 
of this. We know that from the congruent triangles, but now we can prove that that it was actually bisected. Okay, so that's that, that's one piece of information that we've uh, seen in there. Well, several pieces of information related to that. But I want you to see something else. Consider this for a second. This is the purple circle radius, right? And look, if I come around here, then I hit point F with the purple circle. Okay, what that means is this, watch. This line segment from D to E has to be the same distance as the line segment from E to F because we use the same radius. So we've got this distance here is the same as this distance here. And since we created the other circle the other direction, we could say this distance here is the same as this distance here. It's all the same compass setting. So then what kind of a shape did we create right here? What is that? There's a triangle, but what kind of a triangle? Where one side is equal to another side is equal to another side. All three sides. Yeah, we talked about it yesterday. That's an equilateral triangle, right? So in this in this drawing right here, we effectively constructed an equilateral triangle. Now, when we talked about equilateral triangles, we said the degree measures inside for each angle have to be what? They have to all add up to 180, right? So if it's an equilateral triangle, then what does each individual angle have to equal? 60, right? We talked about that yesterday. So check it out. Watch up here. This angle right here has to be 60 degrees. So does this angle right here it has to be 60 degrees. So does, catch this, this angle right here also has to be 60 degrees. But this is a perpendicular bisector, which means that this line not only cuts DE in half, it cuts angle F in half as well. So that means that this side of the angle right here is half of 60. What's half of 60? Okay. Now I want you to catch this. Watch this. This is going to be important. You're going to see this later. This is a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. A 30, 60, 90 right triangle is going to be important for us as we get into our unit on trigonometry. Okay, Trigonometry is basically a skill or a tool that allows us to start with a side measurement and go in and figure out angles or vice versa. We can find angle measurements and take them back out to sides. You've seen them on the calculator. It's S-I-N, C-O-S, T-A-N, those buttons on the calculator. That's trigonometry. And we're going to be using that to figure out side measures and angle measures when we have these triangles. And one of the tools that we're going to use is this 30, 60, 90 right triangle. So again, there's a lot of stuff in this diagram. We'll revisit this when we get back to trigonometry. Okay. So I want to talk about now a specific type of triangle that you're going to be using in the IXL lesson today. All right. And this is triangle DAE. So with your highlighter, go ahead and highlight triangle DAE. D A E. Now, based on what we talked about already about the little triangles A C D and A C E, we can then say that this angle is congruent to this angle. So you want to mark those two angles with congruency markings. Because ACD is congruent to ACE, that makes this angle congruent to this angle. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles. But now we want to consider that as part of one big triangle, this triangle DAE. Now, this is an isosceles triangle. Okay, And there are two unique characteristics about an isosceles triangle. Number one is they have two congruent sides. And number two is they also have two congruent angles. Any triangles that have either two congruent sides or two congruent angles that you know will be isosceles. Isosceles triangles actually have all four. Okay, All isosceles triangles have two congruent sides and two congruent angles. We're going to write all this down. So let's jot this down on our notes right here. Okay, so we're going to say that triangle DAE is an isosceles triangle. So the first thing that I said exists in all isosceles triangles, isosceles triangles have at least two congruent sides.
So all isosceles triangles have at least two congruent sides. And they also have two congruent what we call base angles. So the base angles of an isosceles triangle, these are the angles opposite from the congruent sides. are also congruent. And here's the thing to catch. It's the relationship between the base angles and the opposite sides that you have to be able to see in an isosceles triangle. All isosceles triangles are going to have at least two congruent sides and two congruent base angles but it's the connection between those that's gonna help you be successful in working with these types of triangles. So the base angles are opposite the congruent sides. Let me show you what that looks like in the picture here. So if you're looking at the picture up here, you can see that the two congruent angles are right here, angle D, angle E. So this is one of the congruent angles, this is the other one, okay? And you'll see that those two angles are made up of two sides of the triangle. In other words, this side of the triangle and this side of the triangle make up that angle. That means that the opposite side would be the side that doesn't touch it out here. Now you're going to have to get really good at recognizing this stuff because this also plays into trigonometry. So angle AEC, this angle right here, is opposite side DA because DA does not touch that angle. And angle DAC, this angle right here, is opposite side AE. It's across the triangle, it's across the room. It's like standing in that corner over there and then looking across at this wall. This wall is opposite that back corner of the room, okay? Now, being able to find that is what's going to help you be successful. Because in these questions, you're going to be asked, you know, how do I determine this given either some congruent sides or given some congruent base angles and work your way through that. So again, one more time, the relationship is that the base angle, in this case, ADC, is opposite side AE. It's not the side that touches to make the angle. It's across the room from it. And likewise, AEC is opposite from side AD, okay? All right, I have one more question for you. What type of triangle was this big one that I said that we created here? That was an equilateral triangle, right? Okay, here's my question. Is an equilateral triangle an isosceles triangle? Or are they different? Think about it for a second. In, as far as the characteristics of isosceles triangles go. All isosceles triangles have at least two congruent sides. Does an equilateral have at least two congruent sides? It has three, right? So it has at least two. And the angles opposite those sides have to be the same measure. In an equilateral triangle, would the angles opposite the sides be the same measure? Yeah, because they're all 60, right? They all have to be the same. So actually, an equilateral triangle is an isosceles triangle. Okay, look, it kind of works like this. Um, I'm, I'm going to make a little Venn diagram up here at the top of your notes. You can copy this down. Watch. I'm going to make a little circle up here. Watch this. Here, we'll do this in green. Okay, in this little circle up here, I'm going to put the word cars, and then I'm going to create a subset within there called Mustangs. All right? This is the way the Venn diagram works. Okay? All Mustangs are cars, but not all cars are Mustangs. You get it? Okay. It's a subset. Mustangs are a subset of cars. All Mustangs are cars, but not all cars are Mustangs. Now watch. If I create a subset over here, I could say this. Check it out. 
all equilateral triangles are isosceles, but not all isosceles triangles are equilateral. You see the connection between these two here? All right. Now, here's the thing. The reason I introduce, I introduce this to you now is because this is going to become an important skill, understanding subsets when we get into quadrilaterals, specifically parallelograms, because parallelograms, rectangles, rhombuses, and squares are all related in this subset kind of way, and you're going to need to know what characteristics go with each one of them. So I kind of want to just introduce this idea to you that equilateral triangles are actually isosceles triangles. It's a special subset of them. Okay?